welcome to celebrate what matters. Thank you all so much for coming. We are here today to celebrate your beautiful stories um, about what matters. For the last six weeks, our highly innovative writing facilitator and teacher, Kathy Wall, has led us on an incredible journey. Yes, an incredible journey filled with memory and meaning. Her 20 or so participants range from their 50s to their 90s um, and come from all walks of life. Today, you are in for a real treat. What Matters is a socially engaged art project um, that simply asks the question, what matters to you? The purpose of the project is to engage all folks in our culturally diverse world to take a moment out of our busy lives um, to share our thoughts about the larger meaning of life. Connecting stories, connecting lives. I can meet your friends, you can meet mine. Connecting stories, connecting minds, transcending space, surmounting time. Something's changing. Can you feel it? Do you taste it and know all that's changed in you and how you've grown? How we've grown. wanted to say that I wrote about what matters to me and of course I completely left out my partner that I've been with for 11 years so I'm gonna add him but not really. yeah. I don't know how I could do that anyway what matters <laughs> what matters to me I celebrate what matters to me. My wrinkles, my scars, where would I be without them? They tell the story of who I am. I celebrate what matters to me. My reading that takes me away from reality to places that I know I'll never go. I hear the voices of Augustine Burroughs, Jennifer Weiner, Turn off your cell phone, whoever that is. <laughs> um, the late, that's okay, I don't need it. The late Oliver Sacks of Blessed Memory and other authors that I'll never meet through the words of their books. I celebrate what matters to me. The music of Tracy Chapman, Bonnie Raitt, Joni Mitchell, J Carol King, Judy Collins, Joan Baez, and the late Debbie Friedman of Blessed Memory. Their music is my high. I celebrate what matters to me, the stories of my friends from a group of women that I would have never met without Facebook. I celebrate what matters to me, Jen and baby Landon no longer a baby. I celebrate what matters to me, my parents of blessed memory, my higher power, and all the dogs and cats in my life. Children are precious. The grandchildren spent some time on Saturday to play croquet and pick flowers. On Sunday, Christian, age five and a half, biked down the road to fill me in on all the new hot news, a pancake breakfast and a brunch for all mothers and grandmothers. I continued to sit on my front lawn park bench reading the Sunday paper in the cool of the tree shade. And lo, my other grandchild, Colton, age three, walked right on down the road and sat quietly beside me on the park bench. It was a Kodak moment. <laughs> he peacefully watched my big boy cat, Stripey, walking about the property. When Stripes was out of sight, Colton focused on the mama birds, squawking out, cat alert, cat alert, as they darted from tree limb to tree limb, 
in order to divert our attention away from their tiny newborn birds. We then watched as the expected cold front started passing by us. The wind picked up and was bending the leaves of first the big red tree over the aunt's house next door, and then the little pine tree that his aunt planted 25 years ago, no longer little. It fluttered and it swayed. The white and pink flowering dogwood trees in the rock garden frolicked and boom! The maple tree above us, at that moment, that had sheltered us, was now bending back and forth. That day, I learned to live in the moment and celebrated all that is good and all that matters. Today I summarize what I celebrate, what matters to me. And I say, life itself. Life is for the life my wonderful parents started me on. Life is where I first was brought up with friends and family. Life is the beautiful, negative, and experiences I shared over the years. Life itself, I have learned to know and love myself as a person, and that comes first before we can love anyone. Life itself, I have learned to listen and learn from others, even though we are all alike in his image, but with different ideas and dislikes, which brings us to achieve wisdom and matureness in our lives. Life itself, I have learned and yet to learn that all persons, things, situations, circumstances have all positive meaning in my life. They all matter to me to help me to be a better person, neighbor, friend, wife, sister, especially a friend. I celebrate what matters to me, life itself. been in various fields, but my deepest attention was to uh, newspaper work, and it, that was in small newspapers, local papers, but I got marvelous experience in human life and in the skills required to tell the story. So that was my major experience to share. Uh, I attended the University of California and got a master's in English, composition, and literature. Boy, that was fun. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant teachers. And uh, I have now such a deep involvement that uh, with the future of the world. That's what I mostly worry about, think about, and mostly the way it affects the children. Because I have this marvelous experience with children. I gave a free course in journalism to the fourth grade, and that was a very reverent experience. They were so bright, they were so knowledgeable, compared to the way our children were in the past at that age. So we have a very earnest group of young people listening and watching and learning. And that encouraged me. I was offering my services and I gained so much knowledge from that. So I find that the hope I have is for all those hard workers that are researching and learning and teaching. And that is going on. It continues. Being a small part of it was a real revelation to me. And of course, the greatest thing in my life was my children, having wonderful children. Two children only, and one was adopted. But that made it all the more interesting 
because his genes and history came from another part of the world. So it was a fascinating, uh, it's something that just gets you down to your knees in gratitude and respect for the human race. Just having two kids did that for me. <laughs> so I now want to say that my deepest hopes are for never nuclear bombing those kids. kids. The whole issue is so horrible and so over our heads. But we are all knowledgeable, we work hard, and we will change the world. And I truly believe that. Women especially know that they prepare the children for a peaceful and productive world. taken the time now to truly see the wonder that abounds or looked so casually by me. My family, oft forgotten to the power of pressure ticking, pacing what must be done so fast, so far, full stop, I no more the missing one. I've taken the time now to truly see the memories that abound or looked so purposefully by me. Now holding some at close, yet still some afar, the joy I now will always know they're near to me, not far. My experienced life, oh so much, oh so hard. I've taken the time now to truly see the long road carved, a river or centuries eroding the stone so hard, earned. Give me a second. Earned. <laughs> no forged badges scarred. Hard knowledge, soft strength, quick patience, easy pain. My experienced heart has endured so much. I've taken the time now to try to truly see the companion the universe brought to me. I will never know what truly lies within. I can only know what his gifts have been. Calm love, enduring care, deep connection, and pain. I will not elaborate, but without, I could not appreciate. I've taken the time now, and I truly see a life to celebrate. Celebrate with me. Mother's Day was celebrated last Sunday, I thought of my own motherhood and recalled the first time 
I held my firstborn child in my arms. After 36 hours of laboring, she looked at me, rolling her blue-gray eyes as if to say, this wasn't fun. <laughs> I felt such deep love, it hit me. I'm responsible for at least 20 years. <laughs> and so it was. Motherhood did change life for me. I learned we're not in control. Today, besides my usually celebrating independence and health and enjoyment of art and music, I celebrate the fact that I'm still here. As an older woman, closer to the other end of life, I look to the young people, all these young people over here, I'm not kidding. I look to the young people and hope they can really live life to the full. I want their education to not merely be a database education, but one which will open up a vast world to them so they can truly respect and embrace their differences in saying this. I celebrate people, whether warm or cold, forward or shy, bold or tentative and timid. We people are uniquely created human beings. Thank you. to me, the sun rising to kiss and bless my soul, as well as the universe. Each inhale and exhale a breath. The ocean waves rising and falling with the beat of my heart. Being loved and loving. Being nourished by the earth's bounty of food. The spirit deep within all humans. The everlasting sweetness of a spectacular golden sunset. The circle of life, both the birth and hope of a newborn, as well as a life well lived. And a writing professor <laughs> leading ordinary people to write extraordinary words. That is what matters to me. to me is that I bloom where I'm planted. Integrity matters to me. Erickson, the psychologist, gives this age of mine in this table of life tasks as integrity versus despair. I will not compromise this life task as I have other life tasks in my life uh, because of what other people felt my role was at that time. I have feelings of having been stuck in roles that other people in my life have given to me for their own gain, starting with my birth water. I have struggled around their expectations of me while compromising my education, growth, and opportunities, and while trying to stay somehow in tune with my God-given talents, uniqueness, and destiny. I've been struggling for the past three years with truth. Scripture says the truth will make you free. There is, amen, there is an author, however, who's written a book that says the truth will make you free, but it'll make you miserable first. <laughs> so I choose not to stay stuck in the misery, which could lead to despair. Erickson explains of this life task that it is where people look back in their lives and accomplishments, period. They develop feelings of contentment integrity, and integrity if they believe that they have led happy and productive lives, or they may instead develop a sense of despair if they look back on life of disappointment and unachieved goals. I have had a long and patient resolution to reconcile with my youngest sister. I nurtured her when I was 12 years old 
and so on. My mother was bipolar, and her choice to parenthesize me, to lies me, when, I, uh, when it suited her. This created confusing and conflicting sibling roles for us. Our mother was jealous when she told me of my youngest sister's affection for me, and my sister told me one time, you feel more like my mother than mom does. At our last meeting, while having lunch in Cold Springs, she asked me, so what do you do between doctor's visits and prescriptions? Um, I chose not to, dis to respond, but on the train ride home, I um, reflected on our visit and realized that my sister, with all her doctorate's degree and training, had chosen some pretty demeaning and abusive words. Instead of despairing about my goal to reconcile with her, when I got home, I instead started to make a scrapbook for myself. I began by stuffing it with photos, little treasured notes from my two sons, and some letters of condemnation that I had received in my life. I said to myself, wow, you've been a busy lady and thus bringing me to a sense of contentment and fun. Yesterday on my walk to one of the local coffee shops, I interacted with some of the actors performing in, in a filming. What matters to me when has financial and physical limitations approach me at this stage of my life is that I bloom where I'm planted. I did, and I'm having fun doing it. Celebrating is pulling out all the stops on the sharing of life's exercise, focusing on a particular milestone or feature. How did this come about, and is there some universal meaning to it all? Or did the celebrations just follow from our notion of what matters based on actual experience? Which comes first, celebrations or a knowledge of what matters? What can we say about the circumstances that nurtured these traditions amongst the universe's most inveterate bipeds? That's us. <laughs> the universe is enormous beyond what we could fathom and was born in an explosion of energy that there is no way to even imagine. We do not know from where it comes, what's on the other side of its borders, or if it have any reference to comprehend our position in this enormity. <laughs> Whereas it lasted till now for 14 billion years, we last for but a sneeze in an infinite cold. Something poets can only struggle to capture. We are frail and mortal, yet in this entire universe, only human beings can reflect on the nature of this enormous universe, can remember what they thought about it yesterday, can know where they are in it, or can have any sort of an idea how they developed as the best model yet of intelligent life. Somewhere on our little planet, these little intelligent entities look to the stars and occasionally, after a few drinks, will giggle and say, great big bad universe, we see you, yes we do, and they'll dance a little more until they realize their meaningless existence in this unknown enormity, their mortality, their limits, their weakness to change their surroundings, and they realize that only in celebration can they fling themselves into the present and for a few moments feel complete, not so little, not so pointless. Their eyes off the ball of their transience, but on the ball of their flight. Almost like a ball that can throw itself, their ability to look at each other and realize that they realize, only then do they stay in flight and celebrate. Although many important things are worthy of celebration, the celebration itself stands alone as our finest moment. I celebrate birthdays. I celebrate birthdays with cake and champagne. Birthdays matter more now with fewer ahead of me. I celebrate for those who didn't make it to another birthday. I celebrate the birthdays of my children, my husband, my friends, commemorating their sacred place in my life. 
I celebrate my energy and passion and connection to the earth each time my hands wrap themselves around the wet clay spinning on my wheel. I celebrate being able to create and be filled with magic. I celebrate life's glorious treats to my senses, the sounds of music resonating in my soul, knowing all the words as I sing along to old songs, the sun glistening on the river, the feeling of wet sand under my feet as I wander sandbars at low tide. I celebrate the tantalizing aromas of food cooking and the delicious flavors I share as though they can transmit all that I feel. I celebrate waking to the trees and sky outside my window, the warm softness of my dog as she snuggles, and the strong loving arms that hold me. I celebrate knowing that I have lived my life honestly, and I hope kindly, with few things left unsaid. I celebrate being at peace with myself. When I was very young, going to school and playing with friends mattered to me. In the summer, going to camp, playing hopscotch jacks and catching fireflies in the backyard. When I was a little older, graduating high school, getting a good job, getting married, and having children mattered. Through the years, with all the stresses, struggles, and trials, what mattered was support groups such as a single parent group and a wellness group at Gilda's Club. Also over the years, what mattered a great deal was having a therapist to talk to and help me cope. I've seen several, and at the present time, I see one at the WJCS clinic here in Peekskill. Time with her is priceless. I hope she doesn't retire in my lifetime. <laughs> and finally, what matters most is the possibility of another sunrise. Okay, I've been thinking a lot about karma lately. Everything that we do, everything that we think, and everything that we see comes around again. And I think that's mirrored in generations. The only grandparent I knew was my grandmother. She used to love reading the Bible. And I, as a little child, would ask her, Granny, you reading that book again? How, how come you keep reading that book? And she'd say, I like to read my stories. And she said the same thing about soap operas. So I had a hard time distinguishing soap operas from the Bible until I started reading the Bible. And I realized it was a big soap opera. But what matters, I think, is that if we become aware that everything that we do comes back not only to us, but passes through the people that we say these things to, the actions we perform in front of them, they're watching. They're listening, they're feeling. And so that's what matters to me is that feeling that things don't begin and end with me. They haven't started with me, they haven't ended with me, they'll continue to go on. And I hope everyone has that awareness and that understanding of karma. Space surmounting. 